Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tips and Tricks Tuesdays with me, Valentina V. If you don't know me, I am an independent filmmaker in Los Angeles. I direct, shoot, and edit for various projects worldwide. Um, but today, I am both your interviewer and your instructor. Uh, we have a couple of very, very special guests from World of Wonder. They edit a show that I love dearly called uh, with Trixie and Katya. Um, but before we get to that, I do want to say that we have uh, a lesson as well. So if you want to learn how to do this, stick around afterwards. You can actually download the manual for the lesson over here at adobe.ly slash tips Tuesday. And therefore, you can just follow along with the PDF. You don't have to take notes or anything. We're going to do a couple of fun things on how to edit for emphasis, a couple of tricks that both Ron and Jeff use in their workflows um, to edit us. So I'm going to show those to you. So definitely go here, check out that manual, and also get entered for a chance to win 12 months of Creative Cloud. Where are you tuning in from. I would like to know. Leave it in the comments. I am checking um, everything over here. And also, it's Los Angeles and uh, we've been having bad internet. So if it drops out, stick stick tight because I'll just like reconnect and figure something out. So without further ado, I would love to introduce my special guests, Ron and Jeff from World of Wonder. Hi, guys. Hello. Good. How are you this morning? Wonderful. It, it's been a good day. So for those people who don't know, how would you describe what uh is? Either one of you. Um, I think we. I would say it's uh, you take two drag queens and you put them in a green screen room, tell them to talk about whatever they want for, and and then we try to edit on top of it. So it's it's crazy talking with crazy effects and crazy editing. Ron, do you have anything? Does that sound good? <laughs> yeah, we, we, we cut down their improv and then add our own jokes in the editing. So it didn't start as like so intensely edited as it is now. It kind of progressed over time. Um, how how do you credit that progression like why has it progressed that much and and um what have you added over over the years to like really punch it up and make it more than just what it is there have always been i think a big part of it is there have always been two editors on it uh except for the first nine episodes or so and since then i think um each of us have like tried to kind of make the other editor laugh and make our producer laugh and so and then one of us, one of the us editors will do one thing and the other will kind of like take that and build off of it. And so it just becomes uh, us like kind of trying to one up each other. It's like a fun kind of competition. And like, do you, I mean, what, uh, how do you edit it? Like you receive the footage, right? You're editing separately or you're editing together or how does it work? Do you talk to each other? Do you talk to the do you talk to the drag queens? Do they tell you how they want it edited? Um, what is that process like? Um, what happens is we uh, usually uh, when the drag queens, when Trixie and Katya go to shoot, we'll probably like go down and like say hi to them. But when they're actually shooting the show, uh, we're not there. So after it's done, we get the footage and one of us will probably string out the, the episode and get it down to about 10 to 13 minutes. And then we literally will be like, watch it over and which which one do you want to do which one do you want to do and we do you mean which uh which which, half. which drag queen no no which half <laughs> and we literally just chop the episode in half and and we edit it from beginning to end sound effects text all of that we each do our own section and and then merge it together um so what uh what makes you want to choose a section i guess for for both of you what are those things that you're looking for that you're like you know what this is going to be my section i want to do this section this is calling to me i need to do it just a single joke it's just like one moment where the something occurred to you that you just know is going to be amazing and you want to do that moment that's sometimes that's all it takes 
Yeah, there's what if, also, there's other times where you see a joke and I'm like, oh, I want, I'm going to force Ron to do this. <laughs> or there's like an embarrassing story they tell. And I'm like, I want to see what Ron does with that. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you ever like do it because you want to maybe learn something new and you're like, yeah, I want to like enhance my skills in this particular area? Or is it backwards? Like maybe, oh, I really know how to do this one thing particularly well. And I think that it could really enhance the moment. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm always like, what's the funniest, what's the funniest thing I can do here? And usually then I'm like, the funniest thing would be if this happens. And then it's like, I don't know how to do that. So I'm just going to learn. So I never do it like, I want to learn how to do this. It's always the joke comes first. So if the funniest thing is to do something crazy or learn, because that's the thing is like, I wasn't that great with rotoscoping. But then there's times where I needed to take them out and or remove the chairs. If they stand behind the chairs, I need to remove those chairs out of the way. Uh, and those are things where you just like, well, I just need to learn how to do that to make the joke as funny as possible. Yeah, I would say that is probably your most used technique is just rotoscoping different backgrounds and foregrounds in over them. Because even though they are on a green screen, they're still quite a few things that you have to always be cutting out, always be moving. Um, and you try to do that mostly in Premiere or do you take it to After Effects as well? Binding elements in Photoshop and then most of the builds, most of the big builds are done in Premiere. And uh, we'll go to After Effects if we need a specific effect. Usually that's like tracking or uh, is uh, something along those lines, um, the roto brush. Yeah, well, how do you, I know that both of you have very different sort of mentalities and processes and workflows when it comes to editing your half of the video, which is also wild to me because then it comes together and it looks like one cohesive video that was edited by one person, but it's literally half by one person, half by the other. So how do you start? What is your workflow? We'll go with Jeff first and then we'll move on to Ron. I have a very strange way of doing it. Uh, usually when I do, when I tell other people that I do it this way, they're like, I can't work that way. <laughs> and, and that is I start off doing, once the string out is done, I start off putting in all of the sound and music. And as I'm putting the sound and music, I'm picturing in my head from every whoosh, every every laser beam sound, laser effect, um, I'm picturing in my head what the visuals are going to look like. And it kind of helps me build and figure out what to do. And then after the sound is done, then I go and start pulling all of the assets of every image that I need, every build I need to make, every weird kind of crazy world I need to create. And then I Photoshop everything. And then at the very end, I put all of that in there and add the text and all the motion graphics and all of that. So that's kind of the order that I would do everything. Do you have like a set, um, just a set library of assets that you're always using for audio or for text or stuff like that? Um, we kind of are collecting over time as we collect stuff. In the olden days, we didn't even have like a, a catalog. So we were literally like, what can you find on Pixabay or free or <laughs> YouTube effect? <laughs> uh, but now we definitely, we use like Envato elements for a lot of our stock footage. And, uh, and so, yeah, so we kind of collect a lot from there. But for sound effects, I pretty much pull in um, our sound effect folder and just each episode we I have new and new and newer ones and depending if it becomes like a, a returning bit some sound effects suddenly become classic effects like when 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 uh, Katya touches Trixie we have that classic buzzer sound so you never know whether it's going to be a classic sound or never used again. Well, it's up to you anyway. Yeah. So that's always awesome. Um, Ron, what does your workflow look like? Uh, well, if Jeff's thing about doing sound first sounds insane, don't worry. It sounds insane to me, too. And I know <laughs> I'm used to him working that way. Uh, I do visuals first and then go back through. And I'll do some sound effects as I'm working, but usually I do uh, the full sound pass later. That said, like, there's always this moment of panic when I have mostly just the visuals in where I'm like, none of this is working, nothing's clicking, nothing's landing. Um, and then once I start to add the sound in, that's what can help some of those jokes land. 
And so I sort of, I envy Jeff that when he puts his visuals in, everything's kind of working because he avoids that moment of panic. Yeah, I think Jeff works kind of like a music video, right? Like for a music yeah. video, you need to start with the song or the track and then put in what you need to put in. And then Ron works more in like a narrative workflow. Like he's looking at story and that kind of stuff. And then he'll put in the effects. But still, like you still have, I, I would say you still have some sort of cohesive visual style. Like for example, you often post up words on the screen of what they're saying in word order. So word by word, you mm -hmm. often do that. And that is something that you carry through every episode, no matter what. You often do a little bit of motion blur on the little swipes whenever something swipes in or out. It's a little bit motion blurry. Are those kind of, um, I would say that's kind of a style guide, a visual style guide. And is that important to have? Or is that something that, you know, you kind of developed over time and it's kind of second nature now and it's not even like written down anywhere. It's just kind of, yeah, this is what you do. I think because I came in a bit later, I was trying to emulate kind of the style that was already there a little bit. Um, and uh, I think in the end, I also think we actually just have a very, because I mean, if you watch other things that we've edited, we, even though we're different, we definitely have a similar sense of humor. And I think our sense of humor that's similar um, is kind of what makes the style then kind of, but definitely the swipes, those are a standard swipe. We just have, uh, we just put over it um, an adjustment layer with that swipe effect. <laughs> So that's just something that carries over for every episode that we know both of us are going to use to keep it kind of seamless. With the visuals, yeah, there's nothing like written down. Uh, there's nothing set in stone, but I think it's just kind of a, a feel thing. We both understand the feel of the show and just follow those guidelines sort of like subconsciously, like out of habit by instinct. Um, I think another thing that makes the two halves feel co cohesive, like what makes uh feel like uh coming from both of us is just like when to put in the gags and when to let it just kind of like let Trixie and Katya carry the thing without any crazy edits. Um, it's as much knowing when not to add an edit as it is adding an edit. Oh, that's a very good point. Um, because you can with something like this, where you have so much freedom, you can overwhelm the viewer if it's just pow, 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 too much, like everything cut up. And I think that also comes through in that their default background is white. And then you will pop it, them into environments or into movies or whatever, but then it'll come back to white. So I think that that's, that's a really clever way to kind of like keep the messaging on them and to... Um, to let their jokes shine. Now, when you get the footage, how much of the stuff do you cut out? Are there things that you're like, yeah, no, that won't fly. Like definitely okay. can't put that in. Since they're drag queens, usually that they're used to telling their jokes in like a gay bar. <laughs> there is a <laughs> lot of stuff that can't air. Um, sadly, some of it is the stuff that makes me laugh the hardest, but it's just like, oh no, this is, this is um, some definitely X-rated stuff we can't put in there, which some people would be surprised. My my sister once was like, "Oh, can I show? Can I show my daughter, like my niece, the show?" And I was like, "No," <laughs> because they definitely talk about adult topics. But um, but yeah, they talk for like an hour, and then we cut it down to like about twelve minutes. Oh snap! An hour? Oh yeah. my goodness! I did not think that that was the case. How long, Ron, does um, an episode take to edit? So it takes us about a day to cut, cut it down from that hour to a tight 10 minute string out. Um, and that string out is kind of like, that's nothing, that's bare bones. And then we go in and do our edit and adding jokes, it takes us about, it takes each of us about a day to get through two minutes. Um, so a full episode takes like, six or so edit days and then that's an addition to the string out and then to like half a day of notes and exporting and um, how how is the notes process done yeah Jeff. that our producer he watches it over and then gives us one round of notes 
And uh, I'd say most of the notes are just technical things like, oh, I can see a black frame here. I can see, oh, turn the sound up for when she says this line. Um, every once in a while, he'll be like, that just that joke doesn't fly. Take that out. Um, or, but then sometimes he is like, hey, that joke is your effects are overwhelming. Let's just let have them talk. And I'd say there's times like that where we'll build, and I'll spend all this time building a huge thing, and then when I put it on there, I'm like, oh, this kind of takes away from them talking and saying the funny thing. And then, oh, did we freeze, or did they freeze? Yeah, we only have one round of notes. You, they only have all done. The stream might be paused. Um, let's just wait until it comes back on. Okay, hopefully we're back on. Like I said, there are always issues happening. <sighs> Hold on. We are offline, I believe. Hold on. Are we coming back? Stream suspended for policy violations. Was it because I was showing the clips? I think so. Oh, how weird. Hold on a sec. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to start another stream.